Howdy folks! In this video we're going to see an example of a summary query being turned into a summary table. Which is to say, uh, we're going to go see what the DAX engine does. Not that this is anything that you would ever do yourself, uh, but I think if it's, it's useful if you're trying to understand how to write DAX measures to just see uh, how those measures are involved in the entire sort of symphony of actually creating a summary table. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm here in summary queries.xlsx and I'm in the summary example tab. Now, before we get started, before we get started, I need to emphasize this is not something you will ever do. And furthermore, uh, there's a lot of concepts I'm about to show you that you don't yet understand. And that's perfectly okay, but what I guess what I'm what I'm driving at is don't feel like you have to retain 100% of, of what I'm about to show you. In fact, if you can retain about 5% about what I'm about to show you, that's just fine. All I'm trying to do is give you a high level sense of how these summary queries become summary tables. Almost more like a preview of the things that you are going to learn, okay? So uh, don't try and follow along on this one. Just uh, kick back, relax, and just try and get a sense of how these summary queries become summary tables. Speaking of which, uh, I'm here on the summary example tab of summary queries. I can't remember if I already said that. I probably did. Uh, regardless, the physical table that we're going to be working with is the micro table, which is the smallest table. It's just got shift, type, units, and price per unit, right? And here is our summary query. We have this summary query because inside of Power BI, we can imagine uh, we drag uh, shift into the axis of a visual, type into the legend of a visual, and sales into the value of a visual to produce this visual, right? Which is what we would expect. Um, this visual is driven by this summary table. Where we got this summary table is when we drag this stuff in here, Power BI wrote this summary query and sent it off to DAX to get uh, processed and turned into a temp table, okay? Now, uh, I will add, Power BI wrote this part. The only thing that we did as DAX authors in here is wrote the definition of the sales measure right there, right? So the sales measure uh, we defined uh, ahead of time, right right here. Uh, to do sales, we use this sumx function. You don't know what that is yet. We do this code right here, this code right here, that code right there. The important part is this is our contribution to the whole thing. This is what you're going to learn to write over here on the right-hand side. Um, and the reason that we write these things is because they get used in summary queries. So let's start off, shall we? What does our summary query say? Okay, we want to get all the combinations of shift and type. And once we've gotten all those combinations from the physical table and the data model, we want to create a new uh, measure column called sales. And the definition for it is using the sales measure. These are the instructions to get sales for every single row of that table. Those are the instructions right there. Okay, so uh, let's start off by getting all the combinations of shift and type. And again, uh, I'm doing this. Don't try and follow along with me. I'm gonna move way too fast for that. To do that, right, uh, I'm going to produce this temp table right here. So I'm going to start by grabbing these guys from the physical data model, all the values of shift and type. I don't have the distinct ones yet, but I'm just going to grab all of them to start off with. I'm going to click up here and do control alt V to paste special. I'm going to paste values in number formats, right? So now uh, I've created a temp table, right? Uh, but I need to go get just the distinct values. So to do that, I'm going to select those right there. I'm going to go to data and do remove duplicates and hit OK. Right. Now, when I do, what I end up with is a temp table that has all the distinct combinations of shift and type. Oops, my, my formatting got a little screwy there. Let me just go ahead and move that up. There we go. So uh, these first, uh, I mean, lines two and three right there, they produce this temp table, right, that has all the combinations of shift and type, right? And now what we need to do is summarize columns is going to add this column to it. It's going to have that name, and it's going to use that formula for every single cell, okay? So uh, I'm going to come here, and just to remind ourselves, the name of this column is sales. So I'm going to type in sales right here. I right, hit enter. And uh, what's the definition for it? Well, for every single row, we're going to go run the sales measure. So just as a placeholder, I'm going to select all these cells. And I'm going to type in open square bracket sales, close square bracket. And I'm going to hold down control and hit enter to put that uh, in every single cell that I've got selected. Okay. So we're not done yet. We haven't gotten the answer. Clearly... But uh, here's what this is what we're going to do. For every single row, we're going to run the sales measure. We're going to run it on that row, that row, that row, and that row. And we predefined it a while ago. There's a pre-definition for it. Okay. So let's think about uh, this cell right here, if you want to think of it as a cell, right? Uh, how are we going to calculate this? Well, the uh, measure is going to run. And 
measures are uh, filter revisers. So the first thing that they're going to do is they want to revise the filters before running their sub expression. Uh, what that's going to mean for us is they're going to add filters for lunch and to go. Well, why are they going to add filters? Well, because we don't want sales for everything. For this row, we just want sales for lunch and to go. And the measure before it runs this code is going to add those filters. That's one of the things a measure does. Okay, so uh, let's simulate creating those uh, filter tables, and we're going to add them to the filter context. Okay, so I'm just going to write them up here. So we need a filter for shift equals lunch and type equals to go. So I'm just going to type these in. Shift equals lunch and type equals to go. Okay, so the measure is going to take these filters and stick them into the filter context, just like that. Okay. Okay, so with these filters in the filter context, right, it's going to go ahead and run the sub expression. And the first thing that's going to happen in this sub expression is we're going to get this temp table, right? Specifically, we're going to get this temp table right here based on this, what's called a table derivation, which is how you get temp tables based on the data model. Uh, the sum x function will then add this column to it and sum up the results. So let's go ahead and do that. I want to get uh, this table derivation right there, which is going to end up giving me all the visible rows of the micro table. Not all the rows, just the visible ones. And given that we have filters for shift and lot and uh, to go, we're just going to get the shift and to go rows. So let's go ahead and apply those filters down here. So I'm going to get my mouse to work. So we want lunch and we also want to go. Right, because those are our filters, right? So when this line of code runs right there, it goes ahead and grabs these, Control-C, and it's going to dump them in a temp table up here. Control-Alt-V, paste special, and values in number format. And again, I'm simulating this in Excel, okay? So in order to calculate this cell right here, uh, the DAX engine is going to generate another temp table, right, based on the data model and what's currently visible. That's what that line right there does, okay? So we've derived that temp table. We've created a temp table based on the data model. Now we're going to add a column to it and sum up the results. So let's go and do that. So the name of the column, I'm going to type in exp for expression, right? The column doesn't really have a name because it's only going to be around for like no time at all, just long enough to sum up. So I like to call it uh, the expression column though because it's based on that expression right there. Okay. So what's the definition of it? Well, it's units times price per unit. So I'm going to do equal sign units, and I'm going to multiply that times price per unit. Hit enter, and I'm going to go ahead and click on that cell and drag the formula down. Okay. And now that I've got those numbers, which is 2 times 7, 14, 1 times 9 is 9, 3 times 9 is 27, the sum x function is going to sum them up because it's the sum x function. If I use the average x function, it would average them. So I'm going to click right there. To simulate summing those up, I'm going to do equal sign, sum, use the Excel sum function, and sum those numbers up right there. Closing parentheses, I hit enter and I get 50 bucks. And so 50 bucks is our lunch to go sales, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right there where it says sales. I'm going to type in 50, right? Because that's that's what it is, right? That's the actual result. I'm going to do control B to unbold that. Uh, so when we ran that sales measure, right, the measure found the values of the current row, lunch and to go, added them as filters, right? Then it got a temp table based off all the visible rows of micro, which was just the lunch to go rows, which was that right there, right? The sum x function then took that temp table, uh, added this column to it, and summed up the results. So for every single row, it took the units times the price per unit. And if you sum all those up, you get 50 bucks, which is why we get 50 bucks right there. Okay, so now that we're done with that cell, the filters are going to reset. So I'm going to simulate that by just control V. Control C, Control V to paste over it. Hey, there we go. We're back to our blank filters. And now we're going to do the same thing again, but for this row right here, right? We're going to go run this measure, the same measure, sales, but we're going to run it in this row with uh, values of shift equals lunch and type equals dine in. So the measure being a filter revisor is going to uh, revise the filters and add filters for lunch and dine in, what I call current row filtering or context transition. You may have heard it called that before, right? So uh, let's go ahead and type those out. So I'm gonna click right here. I'm gonna type in shift lunch, not Lucy, but lunch. And uh, I gotta make sure I get this right. This is type and dine in this time, right? Not to go, okay? And so now uh, the measure is gonna add these temp tables to the filter context to filter down to just the values of the current row. So let's go ahead and do that. Drop that in there, drop that right next to it. Okay, so the measure, the sales measure, like all measures, uh, it's revise the filters to add a filter for the current filters for the current row, 
shift equals lunch and type equals dine-in because we're in the lunch dine-in row, right? Now it's going to run the sub expression, right? We're gonna get all the visible rows of micro as a temp table. We're gonna add an expression column where for every single row we multiply the units times the price per unit and we sum up the results. Okay, that's easy. Uh, now down here, this is the old view of the model. Let's change this. So it's still shift equals lunch, but now it's type equals dine-in. So let's go ahead and change that. Something I can actually use my mouse, which 50-50 if I could use my mouse. Probably could use some cleaning. Okay, so these are all the visible rows of the micro table given the current filter context, right? And that line right there, that's what it does. It goes against all the visible uh, rows of micro given the current filter context and dumps them into a temp table for us to work with. So let's simulate that. So I'm gonna select these cells right there. Control C to copy. Click right there, Control Alt V to paste special. Values and number formatting, right? Because I want it to look like a temp table because it is a temp table. Boom, okay, so now we've taken all the uh, visible rows in the micro table and stuck them in a temp table. Now the SUMX function is gonna add this column to it and sum up the results, just like above, right? So I'm gonna type in EXP, this is our expression column. Doesn't really have a name, but since it's based on that expression right there, I call it the expression column. And what's the definition of it? Well, for every single row, we're gonna multiply the units times the price per unit. And when we do, we get one times seven, which is seven bucks. So uh, right here, oh, actually I need to sum it up. Uh, I know what the sum of that is, but uh, technically the way DAX does is it does sum up that column. So sum, sum of just the number seven. Any math majors in the room or stats majors? Seven, okay, so seven bucks is what the sum X function returns. And that's what we get right there, seven bucks. Okay, so now I'm gonna unbold that because we're done getting that cell. Right, and this is very repetitive, but it's how DAX works. Now we're gonna do uh, that cell right there. So uh, let's start by resetting the filters. Oops, Control C to copy, Control V to paste to simulate resetting the filters, in air quotes there. Uh, okay, so we're back to a blank filter context. The measure, right, is going to revise the filters before running this sub expression, uh, which to us means that it's gonna add a filter for dinner, uh, shift equals dinner, and a filter for type equals to go. And then it'll go ahead and run this sub expression. So let's go ahead and just create those filters. Shift equals dinner this time. And type equals to go. Okay, so before we did lunch to go and lunch and dine in, this time it's dinner and to go. So the measure will take these and stick them in the filter context to revise the filters, to change the filters up, to get them just right before running that sub expression. And so now that we've revised the filters, it'll go ahead and run this sub expression right here. Well, the sub expression is going to go get all the visible rows of micro, add this column to it, and sum up the results. Okay, so what are the visible rows? Well, we've got a filter for shift of dinner and type equals to go. So let's go ahead and reset these right there. So I mean, you can successfully do it. My mouse is being a little sticky. Okay, so we want dinner, don't want lunch anymore. And we don't want dine in, we want to go. So let's go ahead and select to go. Kaboom, there we go. Okay, just one row again. Not very interesting, but that's that's how it works. Okay, so we wanna get all those. Control C, come up here and simulate deriving that temp table, making a temp table based on the physical tables of the data model. Control Alt V for pay special. Click values and number formats and hit okay. And right here, I'm gonna type in EXP because we're about to add an expression column, right? Uh, that line right there, line three, got the temp table, all the visible rows of micro. Now the iterator, sum x, is going to take that temp table, add this column to it, and sum up the results. Doesn't really have a name, this new column we're going to add, but I like to call it the expression column. So it's based on that expression right there. So what is it? Well, it's equals units times price per unit. I go ahead, hit enter, and I get 18 bucks. So I'm going to click right here. What do we do with the result? Well, this is the sum x function. So once we've added that column, we're gonna sum it up. Equals sum, click right there, closing parentheses, I hit enter and I get 18 bucks, which is total dinner to go sales. So I'm gonna click right there, type 18, hit enter, and we're done calculating that sale. I'm gonna do control B to unbold that. We got one more to go, control B, okay? So, uh, so for that cell right there, right, uh, we wanna calculate we want to get sales, and we're going to use the sales measure in this row, okay? So the first thing the measure does, measures being filter revisers, right? They're going to revise the filters and then run this sub-expression, the code in the measure. To revise the filters, they're going to start by performing what I call current row filtering, also known as context transition, to take all the values of the current row and add them as filters. 
Uh, oh, you know what? We forgot to reset the filters. Let me reset these real quick. So let me reset those. Right, when the old measure finished running, it reset the filters. Okay, so now when this one starts running, it's gonna add a filter for shift equals dinner and type equals dine-in. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll type in shift and dinner. And over here, this is going to be type dine-in, right? So now we're gonna select that right there. And because the measure is gonna add these as filters, we're gonna simulate that by just dragging these into the filter context to revise the filters to create a new set of filters that we can run our sub expression in. So that when we run them, we're just looking at dine in and dinner, which is what we would want for that cell right there. Okay, so now that we've revised the filters, the measure has uh, changed those filters, revised them, right? It's gonna run the sub expression where it's gonna get all the visible rows of micro, add this column to it and sum up the results, okay? So given that we've got a filter for shift equals dinner and type equals dine in, uh, that one's just fine. Let's change this to dine in from to go. Okay, so these are all the visible rows of the micro table given these filters. So on line three here, when we do that derivation, we're gonna take these rows and stick them into a temp table so that we could work with them. Control C to copy, click right there. Control Alt V to paste special. Click on values and number formats and hit okay, okay? So now uh, we've derived this temp table, right? We've taken these rows and stuck them in a temp table so the temp table so that we could work with them. Uh, what are we going to do with them now? Well, based on the measure definition, we're going to take that temp table that we just produced, add this column to it, and sum up the results. So I'm going to click right there. I'm going to type in EXP, right? That is uh, the name that I'm giving this unnamed column, right? This column we're writing doesn't really have a name, but since it's based on an expression, it's always based on an expression, I like to call it the expression column or the EXP column, right? What's the definition of it? Well, for every single row, multiply that row's units times that row's price. So I click on units. Multiply that by price. I hit enter, and this time I'm gonna copy it down because there's more than one row, which is convenient. There we go. So one times 11 is 11, two times seven is 14, good. So now that we've added this column, we're going to sum up the results because this is the sum x function. So I'm gonna click right there. I'm gonna do equal sign, equal sign sum, hit tab, select those cells, close the parentheses, and hit enter, and we get 25 bucks. So if we run that sub expression after revising the filters, we get the temp table, add the column to it, sum it up, we get 25 bucks, which corresponds to dine-in dinner sales. So I click right there, type in 25, I hit enter, right? Now we're done creating that column. I'm gonna unbold it and I'm gonna go ahead and reset the filters. Control C and Control V to reset the filters. Okay, so now uh, the summarize columns function has actually finished, or well, it's about to finish, I should say. Uh, it's gotten the category breakdown. It's added this column in a temporary format, and now what it's gonna do is it's going to create a new temp table with this column added to it. So to simulate that, I'm gonna do Control C, click over here, Control Alt V, my very favorite, values and number format, and I hit OK, right? Oh wait, let me, let me reset these as well, just to be good, just to be extra good. Should be doing this as we go, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit escape to get rid of that marquee. And so uh, this summarize columns function, right? It produces this and once it's got those values, it produces a new temp table that looks like this. It's still got all the combinations of shift and type and now it has a new column called sales that has these numbers in it, right? Now, right now this temp table is something only DAX can understand. So the very last step of the process is it takes this temp table and converts it into a summary table. It's the same values, but it's in a format that it could send back to Power BI. Speaking of which, uh, the DAX engine sends this temp table right here back to Power BI, Power BI receives it, and then uses it to draw the visual, okay? Now I know that was a lot of stuff, but I think it's really helpful to see how the whole thing works uh, before you even get into some of the nitty gritty details. Okay, so feel free to watch that one again, and if you didn't get everything out of it, uh, don't worry, you were only supposed to get that at a very high level. So I hope even if just a little bit that was helpful for you. And with that in mind, let's pop over to the next video.